we travel a lot to the Anskloof, and we, okay. have, uh, we had a farmer there that I was quite, uh, um, that I know quite well, and he gave us permission to go up the hills on his farm. And this one was growing at the cliff. We actually had to use some ropes to go down the cliff, oh, to wow. duck it out in the cliff. And it was just this little tree, just this little tree. Nothing, yeah, a little bit of branches, yeah. yeah. And we got it in the back, and obviously then I wasn't scared of heights here then, but now it's a uh. story. So this is in, in this pot, and this is like a cement pot um, from over the last 18 years. So very important is to make, if you make the, 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 the canopy of the tree, I think you know, everybody will make it, they say it's a shrub, and it's not a shrub. I mean, if you let it grow, it will grow into a shrub. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you have to open it up. Sacrifice a little bit of these branches so that the sun can penetrate. It, just, mm. it makes a beautiful picture if the sun penetrates it. If it's just like dark and it's the shadow, it's, uh, it's not that nice. Yeah. You can't see the, the branches. That's so true. Oh, the inside looks so beautiful with the light coming to it. Yeah. I always ask to tell the people that if you have the solid, you take a torch, obviously it's an afternoon, you take a torch, you put it there. If the, the light doesn't reach the soil surface, it means it's too, it's too solid. You have to open it up. You can see these lichen growing here? Yeah. It looks like, no, you have to take it off. You don't have to take it off. It's uh, beneficial to the tree. You can see this? Yeah. Yeah. Just leave it. That's how it right. grows in the wild. So you didn't put those, that's just no, naturally. No, start growing. That's amazing. And it's not a disease. It's just uh, they live, they live in like a, in, um, it's like a saprophyte. You know, they, it's beneficial for the tree. Okay. Yeah. We had to put it onto the slab and try to fixate it. Right in the beginning, we just put a steel, uh, pen in here, it's actually, actually a base of cement and uh, just put a steel pen, uh, pen in here and just you know, fasten it to the pen and um, over the last few years that pen just rotted away, rusted away, yeah. now you just have to leave this, but it's already fixed to the, to the surface but you can see yeah. it's sturdy, but even then with a bad one, you know, this can topple over so we just leave this here and obviously I can't move this if you put it in a bucket. So is there like a raft at the bottom or is it? No, no, it's oh. all these single little trees. Okay. Like from a big trunk that, fall, that, that fell okay. over, we just cut it off. All the like different this. branches, yeah. But this is the, the, the biggest and one and it didn't have any, um, you know, um, uh, branches on top. It was just here. So this is all new growth over the last eight, nine years. So it's uh, coming on quite well, but you know, we still have to establish the root base. This one developing a, in a little rightly style. It's coming now, some, but then again, this is a broken cement pot, but you know, it's just used to, to, to support the, the, the tree. Because there, there are not many roots there that will support the tree at the moment. So give it another year or two, then it can stand on its own. But in, Till that time, it's developing quite nicely. But there again, I mean, it does grow in the wild like this, but not, you can see this. I mean, this is all natural. I didn't do this. Nature did this. But down the branch so that the branch can actually sit in this position. That's why I say I don't use wire. I will use this guy wires just to pull it down, use this to create this pen, and once it's fixed there, and I can take off the branch, I'll take off the wire, I'll just probably just chop it off here. And that would be the new uh, foliage pad, not this. These are all Yamadori. Getting from, if one look here, it's very funny. This is a root, and it just died off here, but it's now blunt. Uh, it's yeah. just surviving. Usually they rot it back and you have to cut it off there, but it's still that's very it looks broad in the base of the Nambari. But you know, there we will find the roots here, and that's why we fixate it here, otherwise it will just topple over. Yeah. And it's going well. And this was actually a, just another branch from a tree okay. over the last six, seven years, I think. Yeah, it's about seven years. And it's just, it's getting fixed to the, to, to the slab. This is a 
what you call a stone slab and then we just put some mud here just to collect the water and again I mean if you will water it it will just sip here at the bottom and it's just to keep the roots not wet all the time but just to keep keep the water here otherwise you won't get these these root of it the development um, obviously it it can rot if you over over water it but yeah. every now and then especially on the days like this you just have to check the soil yeah and just re-water it as long as there's, there's drainage the soil is healthy the tree is healthy you won't get root rot and what soil it's do you just, have a special soil that you use yes lots of stone lots of stone with a little bit of pieces of pine bark oh I'll, I'll show you okay you can see there's pieces of pine bark in between and Stone just make just, uh, sure it's draining. So if you take the soil and you make a clump like this and you squeeze it, actually must be wet and it makes a little flat like a cake. It's too wet, it's too solid. But if you open it up like this and it just breaks uh -huh. apart, then you know your soil is fine. The mixing is about 60% uh, of, uh, of stone and about 40% of pine bark really sifted pine bark that's about five to seven millimeters you can get that from uh, from the uh, outer root center or the oil shops and uh, and it's important to use this because i mean the drainage is so it's so much better than the ordinary soil but you need healthy soil for to, to convert that nitrogen into a nutrition otherwise it can become toxic to the, to oh, the tree yeah. and that's what people must realize you can't just take soil and put a lot of um, pellets in here and think it's going to work. If you don't have organisms in here that's going to convert that nitrogen to, um, to nitrogen three to nitrogen four, that, that's available for the roots, it's not going to work. That's why this, the, the water soluble um, fertilizer, the liquid second solid, solid uh, works quite well. But then again, if you water every day, you actually have to put fertilizer or dilute a mixture of fertilizer in the water every day otherwise you just wash it out For sure. and if you just have stone there's nothing to retain the the, the, the fertilizer but at least the, the pine bark will keep some fertilizer back in the pot same sort this is just my bucket instead of buying stuff it just works much easier to pour it into a uh, um, in your pot and you can actually manage the, the angle or the going out and these are just a uh, little fertilizer mix with bounce back and 232 and bone meal and whatever and or earthworm you know the worm. mix that mix that yeah. and you make little cakes and this is just you make it yourself with all yes. that mixture okay yeah. but this is just to prevent the lace that that little bird that will mess up the soil and the yeah. sometimes it just rip this off and they will disintegrate the cake just to get after the earthworms. Ah, I see. Yeah. See, it's quite loose mixture. Interesting. But the only thing this is working, it's obviously if you keep it wet. If you don't keep it wet and it becomes dry, it becomes useless. These two were put, back, put here about three, four years ago. Okay. And the reason for that is just to give you a type of, um, you know, the relation of small trees, bigger trees, and the depth. I think the, the important thing here is the depth that you must can see right through, and you can see the trees at the back. These are obviously just the fertilizer stuff that we um, tried to protect it from the laster. I think important if you look at the forest, so said these little branches there just create this depth. If you take that out, out that, it, you lose the depth. If you, percent, yeah. if you take that branch off, you won't, it won't mind. There's the difference, you can see. Yes. And this one will shine because this is going up top of this. So this one must actually go, but that one definitely leaves. Because it will take your attention to that one and it create this depth of that forest. This is really, really, really old. I mean, now I can, uh, you can you can just evaluate this as an old tree. The internodal um, the rings are very close together. So the closer they are, the older the, the tree older is. The tree is, yeah. And it's right up to the canopy. It's not just here. You can see there. But the only way to get it like this is not wiring. I mean, you know, I 
take you a ways to just pull it into position, but don't wire it. If you do want the tree or the, the, the ramification, you need to do the clip and grow method. And what is very important is just to, to leave it, let them, let them grow out, and until you get hardwood, I mean, the moment of the, the, the stem, you know, discoloring to the brown, deep purple, then you cut it. You can see this was cut about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and there the new leaves. So then you get the, the next two branches from there. So that you can um, see the back and expose the back to the sun as well. You don't even have to move it. You can yeah. just turn it and work on the back. Yeah, it's nice. I can't pick it up, yeah. These little saw I'll show you is actually the stuff that they use on the ski boats for the tree for the trees. Okay. It's like a steel steel um, uh, turntable with a little bit of plastic pellets inside, like a ball bearing, but it's plastic because it, it's not supposed to rust at sea, and it works quite well and it's really flat, and there's no restriction in movement. Why don't we use African trees and why don't we use African styles? Like, you know, um, Charles Saronio put it in his book. Yeah. So this year we do that um, and the theme will be African styles with African trees. You know, looking at the olive, the bitlia, the wild fig, um, and then the styles, the baobab style and the wild fig style and the wonderboom style and the beefleaf style and the flat top style. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice styles, but it's underutilized in I think most people will, don't know about the stars. I think the longest period that they were was put together, depends on the microclimate, uh, on the research was 223 days without water. That's in the Karua. Okay? In a pot, it won't survive. Yeah. It definitely won't survive. Yeah. But 223 days is a long time for, for a tree to go without water. Charlotte Storm and Mikey's Fontaine. And they were busy sawing off the pole, the telephone pole, pole. And you can actually see this is a hole for the pole. The pole came here. So we asked permission from the municipality, can we remove the pole? And we, me and my wife, Isabel, we just you know, they took a saw and cut off the pole and try and pull it out and rip it out of the wall, of the ground. No, no roots, a few. But this was the developing, just developing over the last 11 or 19 years. And this is a typical baobab style. You can see the little hands reach to the skies. And be there again, it's, it's coming on nicely. There was a lot of roots here but it all rotted while it was lying there and getting, um, um, you know, it was in a little crack and the, the, the animals were actually sleeping on top and all the urine and stuff, I think, just messed up the, the root base. So when we took it out, that's just about half of the base that we took out. The other half just rotted away, but was lying here. So these at the back, it's all new growth from this main stump. You can see this little thin thing coming out here. Yeah. And here keep a little bit of a stump there because it will actually cause a little bit of a scar and an indentation and it forms actually beautiful um, scars that actually um, make the tree much more interesting. This as well, eventually you can actually just take it off and you just flip it over and you will lose that little scab and you will get a natural type of scar formation there that will also follow the line of the trunk. So would you cut that off or would that fall off? No, that will fall off eventually. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go with a sharp knife and I will just nip it off, let it rot, and rot back up until here, yeah. and then it forms a scab. And then you, after a few weeks, you can just lift the scab. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'll show you on so one you, tree. You yes. would have, would you normally cut that lower when you make the first cut? Would it be at that, at that at angle? At that angle, yeah. Don't cut it there because if you okay. cut it there, it's going to. Um, die back inside Further, the stem yeah. and you get this like in, uh, reverse oh, uh, okay. taper. So you leave a little stub and then, then yes. you work that down yeah. over time and then it creates a, a smooth, almost was that, 
Was that one there? Used to yes, be, uh, there, that's one in there's one as well. Some... So you see it's quite smooth. Here's the scab that I bought a few months ago. Let me just take off the... I was using that as a demonstration. And then if, if you just lift it off, you will see what happens. If you cut it too close to the branch, you can see that indentation. Yes. And it makes an inverse taper, which is not nice. Yes. So never cut it too close to the tree. Okay. Leave a bit of a stump like that one. I mean, my wife and noticed this thing lying on the ground. And it was just this thing with a few little branches going up. And it was obviously it was cut off here. Not cut off, but it was broken off here. And I think it must be a kudu or some great animal. It was just lying there, about two, three meters away from the mother tree. And we put it into a little, uh, just sand. And it rooted quite well. You can see it's quite thick. And this is also about 14, 15 years old. And we tried to develop it like, you know, we need to get the canopies. And, and again, try to create individual canopies that actually will light, give light through. And then just to break this, you know, uninteresting flow of the of the of the trunks but because of it, it's a forest it doesn't really matter if it's if it's straight these will create interest especially this one most people will say cut it off but you know it's just get that a sense of um uh, greatness the small trees this must all go away and the other trees and then the one main tree going up top with a knife. I did, did that the same, yes the same. You know, I just cut it off about two, three, three months ago. So now the problem is if you do, if you, if you, if you cut it too deep, it's developing this natural scar formation. But if you look at from the side, you'll definitely see some inverse paper. It's thick here, it becomes thin and it becomes thick here. And it, it gives you that gnarled type of appearance. But you know, for, for many people, it won't suit the style of bonsai because you have the thick piece here, thick piece here, and then the thinner piece in here. But there again, it just create that interest. Mm. But I suppose you could then... You can cut that off cut as that well, yeah. yeah. Thinner and then... No, very you can definitely do that. This tree, you can also see, is very old. Just look at the internodal space, spacing. This is now the back we need to go to the top. This was planted here as cuttings into this, these little pockets and fixated with a little bit of mud. And over the years it developed like this. And this is about you know, nearly 20 years old. And it's just growing. You can see there as well, sir. Oh, okay. It can be due to sun, but sometimes if you have too much water, it will just drop its leaves. Drop its leaves and the leaves get too big. Yeah. Big there, there. You can see it's big and flat. It's not round and juicy like this to the ears or ear on top. And you don't want that. I mean, you want the yeah. whole idea with the forest to get small um, uh, leaves and not these black, big, flat type of leaves. Okay, and note it's just coming on from, from one spot on the, on the brass, but it's fine, lots of fruit. And this one is here now for about nine months. Just look at this. All around. It's already a, quite a nice little body when I, I can't pull it out now because I will damage the roots. I need to open the bottle and then plant it. But I just will leave this until we finish with the demonstration. But it must be clean, clear water. I try to use some fertilizer in the water light bounce back. And after nine months, well, in six months, because I threw it away, no roots whatsoever. It was just lying in the water. All other trees will need water to root. Where speckworm, they don't need water to root. They will grow roots to go and search for water. That's the yeah. whole idea in, in, in nature. 
And this is just actually just a contradiction of what's going on here, why is it happening. And it's growing like this. And it's not dropped, but it must be clean, clear water without any chlor, or it must be rainwater. Well, I, I suppose you can use, um, you know, tap water if you let stand it for a day or two, yeah. and get rid of the chlorine in the water. This is just a rock. Very really interesting rock. Is that a natural rock? That's a natural rock. That's Amazing this is a natural rock. Little... Yeah. And this was on a on a little um, in a farm near Mike's Fontaine. They had the flowers. And um, this was just put into these little pockets. And you can see there's no drainage. It had water about two, two, three hours ago. There's no drainage, but it's still growing. And these are quite old. And how old is this? Well, you know, it, I think it's at least 11. 11, 12 years old. In that? In, in this. It was standing in here right from the beginning. A oh. little bit of clay, put it in there. Obviously, then did, didn't know, water it because then it will rot. And once the roots are established, then you can um, start watering on a more regular base. You can see it's actually, I can't pull it out. It's actually fixate into that little pocket. And it's just growing like this. That's incredible. So whatever one year or knows about the tree, nature will prove you different. Make a little pocket in here and just put a cutting in there. And the moment it starts growing, I just put it on its, on, on, on its flat, on, on, on its back that the water can actually uh, keep keep um, going into the pocket and then eventually once it's established and it's growing well I just put this system so whenever I open it up it can just water, water it with a little bit of nutrition in there and it will just grow but it must get a lot of sun so this is quite old it's also about 14 15 years old when I started and there, are the roots going to come all the way down there unlikely unlikely they the, you know they don't Sent roots, you know, like in crevices, like a like a ficus. Right, so that's yeah. why the, the root over rock, rock stuff with uh, doesn't suit the, the spec point. You'll find in nature, but then it doesn't cling to the rock. It yeah. will just go over the rock. Well, before you start doing anything, we need this this little stump because there was nothing here. It was just this and this. Yes. So we put it in here and wait until it starts showing new leaves. Then you know the moment it starts showing new leaves or little open up new leaves, you know the roots are developing at the bottom. Then you can put it into a mixture and uh, start developing it. And the whole idea is actually to do this pigeon style that you have. It looks like a hill and you're going to develop small little trees here. Obviously there are too many of these, but I need to see which one will grow the best. And then I will cut it off and more form little trees. It will look like little trees on a hill, but it's actually on its own mother tree. You can see at the back here, it's growing here, so it will grow a little tree here, like hanging over just to create some depth with the scene. <laughs> 